G'day, I'm Clive and welcome back at the Armadale Reptile Centre with Lucy. Right, we're going to be looking at the red kangaroo. Hello. Hello. Hmm? I'm going to pick in Lucy's brain now. <laughs> They're gorgeous, I know so much about them. Go start then, tell us. Well, they are probably, well, kangaroos in general are probably one of the most iconic Australian yes, animals. Yeah. Um, the red kangaroo is probably one that people won't see very much in the metro area. They um, inhabit further north and east, so they're more of your semi-arid to arid locations. But they are very, very widespread across all of Australia. So from east to west, you'll see them everywhere. Um, and they don't really change a great deal. Um, they are also the biggest uh, marsupial um, that we have in the world. So um, that's pretty impressive for our gorgeous kangaroos. So for people who don't know what marsupial is, like a oh, younger, explain yes. to them. So, um, well, to start with, mammals, um, a de defining characteristic of mammals is that they produce milk. Um, so marsupials are a form of mammal, but the addition to that, which makes them separate and makes them especially marsupials, is the fact they've got a pouch. So all pouched animals are um, marsupials uh, and they produce milk for their young as well. So kangaroos um, are probably one of the most iconic marsupials that people would know about. Yeah, if you mention Australia, most people think of the kangaroo or the koala. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that'd be the two big ones, yeah. So, the food they eat, what is it they survive on? They, um, they're actually pretty amazing because of the way they live in this arid, semi-arid um, environment. They have pretty a wide range of food groups. So there's lots of different leaves, bark, um, tubers, roots, things like that that they dig up out of the ground. Um, they'll go along and they'll um, strip bark off trees, whether it's fallen or if it's live. Um, it's an issue that uh, parks like us have when they ring bark our live living trees and then our trees start to die. So they, they, they actually eat the bark as yes. part of their food day? Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically anything a tree provides, the kangaroo can eat pretty much all of it. Um, and they're unique in the fact that they derive a lot of their water from what they eat. So they do still need to drink water, um, but to the uh, such a high degree is not as necessary. So they can go longer periods, given food is good. Um, so when you have your drought periods, that's when having water out is incredibly important because finding um, fresh leaves and greens and things like that, browse for them to chew on can be hard for them. So it's always a good thing to leave some water out if they're around. So in captivity, they'll grow to about what, what, 1, 1. 1.5 maximum? Two, Two actually, in captivity. In captivity. Yeah. So males are significantly larger than females. Males are always um, bigger in every aspect. So the males can get two meters and even taller. I've noticed some to be taller. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've had one jump in front of me a lot taller. Yes, um, particularly yeah. when they are presenting. So they rock back on their tail and they stand up taller on their tail and they beef themselves out. So they can get bigger than two meters in that regard. Um, and they can get 90 kilos is probably the high end for a male um, kangaroo. Um, and then the females are quite a bit smaller than that. Nine so times they're saying seen. their body mass could be about 80% muscle? Muscle, yes. Um, for boys, um, a big adult male doesn't actually really have a lot of predators. So his muscle mass is used more for um, male male fighting for in the breeding season and things like that. So the biggest, strongest, beefiest bloke basically is the one that gets all the girls. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then that's where the whole um, boxing kangaroo has come from because that's the way that they um, they fight each other. But it's actually I don't I'm not sure why the hands are involved because it's their feet that they use. So they grapple with each other with their arms and hold each other. Um, and then they use their feet to kick. Um, so for girls, that's not a good thing because you know you've got a joey in your pouch. Yeah. You, you, but um, so for them, for all of them, the males in particular, because they lack that pouch on the front, 
um, they do have a kind of a thickened skin layer um, and a lot of that is to help with the kicking so they don't actually seriously hurt each other. Natural body armour. Yes, yeah. yeah, in a way, yeah. So you, you, you was on about the joey. Yes. So explain to people where the joey starts. Well, so um, kangaroo babies are very unique. Um, so you know how big they can get. But when they're first born, they're only the size of about a little tiny jelly bean. So they're very, 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 very small. They're pink, they're hairless, their eyes are closed. They have basically no perception whatsoever of the outside world. Um, so they're born um, from mum and then they basically crawl their way up mum's body and then slip into the pouch. Um, and then from the pouch, they attach to a teat um, from there. And then over time, they grow bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. So they, they will probably be so, suckling up to a maximum of about 12 months, is it right? Yeah, nine months is a, about the around the time that mum starts to kick them out of the actual pouch. They still come back to suckle, um, up, yeah, up to about 12 months, if not a little bit longer. Um, so a lot of that depends again on the season. Bad season, they'll usually stay mum longer. Good season, they can get away faster. Um, and then by about the, well and truly by the year and a half mark, they're independent. Males usually have been moved on from the mob. Um, females may stay with the same mob their, their life. Um, but yeah, then um, mum usually can then have another jelly. So, so you, you keep using the word mob and that means group. They're, they're, they're group. They're family yeah, group. Yeah, they're family group. Yeah. That usually consists of one, it's got one dominant male who's the one that breeds with the females, but it's also got a kind of a dominant female, like a matriarch yeah. as well. Um, and then usually all the other ones are either the young, other females, or perhaps sometimes on occasion you get um, males in there, usually older males or, you know, males that aren't so concerning for the dominant one. Um, but a lot of the time males will either go off on their own if they're more mature and old, but the younger ones can sometimes form small groups of males and then they go off on their own, just, um, I guess, for safety um, as well. So the, the, you're saying about the joey and they kick them out for about 12, 18 months. Mm. They're, are they, was it, uh, I've heard they're one of the only ones that can stop themselves producing a baby yes. until that point? Yeah, so it's called embryonic diapause um, and the red kangaroo can do this. Um, it's basically, they've got their embryo, it's fertilized and they just hold it and they wait. Whether they're waiting for a joey to like leave and she's free again to have a new joey, whether they're waiting for a better season, um, uh, it could be a number of these, these things. Um, I don't believe it's entirely known for the fullest extent they can hold this um, embryo, um, but they can, yeah, they can pause it basically half, halfway through before it um, implants and grows. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, wait. Things just turned off now. Uh, what, what else can you tell us, Ross? I remember what I was going to ask. So, um, red kangaroos are red, yeah. <laughs> hence Not the name. Me. They, they, mate all, they can mate all year round? They can red. mate all year round. Typically spring and summer is the optimum uh, breeding season for them. Um, they can mate all year round, but you'll find it's during spring and summer that they are having their most fun, I guess, yes. is what you'd say. Because yeah. um, usually it's when food is the most abundant um, and they can get around a lot. Um, and they're, yeah, their big active periods are between like uh, early morning, late afternoon. And then, as you can see with these guys, midday is siesta time. Mm. It's just a relax because it's usually the hottest part of the day, especially for the reds who are in that deserty, aridy environment. They do need to make sure that they're staying out. Now, every time I've seen a kangaroo when I've been walking in the bush, mm. they've stayed away from me. Yes. But there's times yep. you can get in that situation. So what should someone do when you get that male standing in front of you and yeah warning you it's one of those situations where once you've gotten into the thick of it there's not a lot you can do to help yourself um but you really have to get quite close to them to be in the thick of it sort of thing or startle them to the point of you know um it's usually dogs that they go for not people 
um, because dogs tend to keep antagonising um, sort of thing. And then there's a um, belief that they will grab you and then drag you to a river or a water and try and drown you, um, things like that. I've seen it's happened. I don't know if they intentionally do it or if it's just using um, their surroundings. But honestly, run. Uh, you can't fight them. No, if you no. lay down, they're going to keep going. You just got to get away as best you can. You really, really do. Those um, nails on their feet, they could they could cause very severe yeah, d injuries. Just that one, they're holding me. Yes. You could feel them. And that's course. his front feet. Yeah. That wasn't his back feet. Yeah. So, yeah, I, you can't really do a lot except just get out as best you can. They're not they're not known to chase or to pursue. Um, it's the same with pretty much everything in the animal kingdom. They just want to be safe, and as soon as the threat's out the way, they chill out and go back to their day. Yeah, they just want to be left alone. Basically, yeah. <coughs> yes. Oh, anything else you think people will be interested in or need to know? Well, the other thing is their um, the look of them. So they look very different to the grey kangaroo, which is the other one that we have uh, largely in WA, um, because of their red colouring. Um, but red kangaroos have very distinct white patches on their face. So the, the most common one is a white kind of strip or band going from their mouth up to their ear. Um, and then they've got white and even sometimes slightly black patches on their face. So they can be quite easy to distinguish from, from other roos who are more plain coloured on their face. Um, and then you've got the very vivid red colour. Um, in, in joeys, not always super obvious, but in mature ones it is. So is that just a mature male or is it male and female? Mature males have the red colour. Um, females are usually called blue does, but there are females that still have that red colour. They just tend to have a bit more of this silvery grey colour through them, um, but it's not the way to distinguish gender because i've seen red females and i've seen quite blue males so it's just a common way but it shouldn't be the only way mm. yeah so that's all Do that, you yeah yeah there's not much more to them they're, they're quite lazy animals at the end of the day um as you can see <laughs> ch chilling out in the background there <laughs> enjoying the sun yeah yes yeah the, f the first we've had for about two or three weeks yes yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you for that. That's okay, yeah. my pleasure. So, thanks for watching. And if you've enjoyed the video and you're not a subscriber, remember to go down below, click on the subscribe button, click the thumbs up button, click the notification bell, and select all so you'll be notified of all future videos. And if you are already a subscriber, again, I thank you very much.